Welcome to our gathering this morning, and uh, welcome to singing school. Uh, we'd like to begin with a prayer, and would you have any concern for us to pray about? Edgar and Guatemala. Remember Edgar and Guatemala? They're uh, looking forward to having a little baby. Pray that the Lord will bless them with a little child safely and also take care of Edgar and his health problems. Brother Ed, Ed got. Those that are sick and can't be here. Amen. Those that are sick. Seems like we have a pretty good size uh, amount of singers this morning, which is nice. You can pray for James Keeling. Keep him in your prayers. Okay. Jimmy. Let's pray for people remember Jimmy Keeling. All right. Um, Brother Mike, would you lead us in the opening prayer? Father, thank you for this day. And we just pray that your will would be done. Help us, Lord, to hear your voice and just guide us and uh, be with those who need your help today. Uh, Edgar and Jimmy, Lord, those who, who are expecting, all those who are suffering, Lord, who just need help. Just pray, uh, we just pray for them and ask for your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, ready to sing again. First of all, I have a little story to tell you. Um, I was in a chorus one time, and we were having regular sessions. And one morning, we were just struggling. This was not going very well. Um, Songs that were just a little bit new, not even completely new. We had sung them before. But just, we were just struggling. It wasn't working out very well. There were people off tune, people off timing. And uh, just wasn't, wasn't going very well. And in general, no one was singing very strongly either. And uh, we kept going. Our dear leader was just giving it all he had, trying to coach us along, talking about the hymn, talking about the notes. And we tried again. And all of a sudden, in the midst of a, uh, one of the stanzas, right in the midst of it, he just yelled, no, 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 and shut us right down. We just... And uh, he said, we will not, when we all got quieted down, we will not talk to our neighbor during the hymn. And he had found, and he was scanning through the audience, through the course, uh, he had found somebody that was part of the problem, talking to his neighbor. And you think either one of those two were singing? Do you? They weren't. You can't talk, whisper to your neighbor. And you can't listen to your neighbor very good while you're still singing. Um, and so, there it was. He had found the problem. I mean, we were just, we were stung from his sharp rebuke. But, I was glad at least he had found the problem. And uh, we kept going struggling uh, with another hymn or two. And it, just before the last hymn, he went like this. My heart tells me I was a little hard. Will you forgive me? And, and it was quiet. He could have heard a pin drop. And we closed that chorus period. And later, in seclusion, I heard the rest of the boys talking. Some of them in little groups talking. And I heard them say, a number of them say, he just flew off the handle. He just got mad flew off the handle. One of them said he just lost it with anger. 
just like my dad. And we all knew that his dad was excommunicated from the church. And, uh, and he said, just like my dad. I saw it right there. And I was saddened by that. I mean, justified. We needed it. That young man that got, uh, that was, that was called down for that, in two days, two or three days time, the very leaders of the whole Bible school sent him home because all he was there to do was make trouble. That's what he wanted to do. And they sent him home. He was expelled. And after that, we could sin. And uh, I know the next, the, the, the next chorus period, we stood up there. He, our leader stood up there. He said, it's a new day. It's a new opportunity. Let's sing. And we sang all glory, laud, and honor. You know that song? That the little children sang. Uh, tells about the triumphal entry of Jesus. And I don't know, that's one of the times I remember singing with a group that I mean, we just about could see daylight at the eaves of the ceiling where the ceiling was lifting. I mean, we were going for it. And uh, so, a rebuke is in order sometimes. And I went to that, uh, I and a couple of other young men went to that leader and said, you did the right thing. So, especially after we heard the murmurings in the other, the young men who were there to criticize. And, uh, and that leader taught me so much about him appreciation. I actually sat in a class of many sessions about him appreciation. And we studied uh, like, uh, like 10 different hymn books and the history of them and also of the composers of music and the authors of lyrics of, of the words and, and, and I, I treasure that to this day uh, so let's stand sing our first hymn number 19 holy, holy, holy is the Lord Ready, bass? Let's hear it.
Sit down again. I want to talk to you a little more. Uh, what we were talking about, singing. Uh, Charles Wesley said, sing all. There's two words. Sing all. Don't just sing. Sing! You know, sometimes we do things just because they're a chore. But when, we, when we praise the Lord, being born of the heart is what makes a joyful sound to Him. That comes from the heart. So yeah, remember Charles Wesley's rules of singing. One of them was sing all. And, uh, and that means all of you. I mean, just with everything of God. And uh, we have reason to, real reason to. You can stand again. I think I have 44. Let me get this thing quiet again. Yes, the name of Jesus. Okay, what, on the chorus, what do we do with our volume? Somebody? In the, in the chorus, what does it say we're supposed to do with our volume? One of you? Yes, actually, uh, it's not just choir. That MP would be moderate piano, uh, just a moderate softness. And then, not real soft like PP, which is pianissimo. Um, then we would have the louder, like he said, and then what? FF. Fortissimo. Yes, fortissimo. That's fuertissimo. That's really strong. That is our word in Spanish. Fuertissimo. Very strong. So uh, we just we build up the chorus. And then, it's worthy praise forever. The last verse. We're going to sing verse 4. And uh, just follow my hand. Mm -hmm. No! Yeah. 
We're not going to wear you out this morning. We've got three rest homes to sing in. So maybe another one yet. Did you have a selection you wanted to sing? You ladies, you ladies can say too. Give them a chance. Amen. 84. There we go. Count your blessings. We need to do that. Especially as I was committing it to memory, just I found myself, you know, 
like through the busyness of the day, just, oh, I need to stop and I was doing two verses a day. I need to stop and meditate on this and, you know, I had my verses in my pocket and I would work on the verses and I found it was almost an interruption to my day, like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm having to say these words and commit them to my memory. But that's a good thing because it, it helps you to uh, get your thoughts in the right place, even in moments where you normally wouldn't think about doing that. And, and the words are so meaningful because uh, I guess here's my thought of what particularly stood out to me is in the, the last verse it talks about, or the, sec, the last three verses, uh, he says that his hope is in the Lord uh, from the morning watch even unto the night. And from the morning watch even unto the night, let Israel hope in the Lord. And I just thought how that's such a powerful thing because our only hope is in the Lord. So if we can always keep that in mind, then, then he'll help us through our lives. And, and so that's, that's really part of what stood out to me in the psalm. One part that stood out to me was where uh, it says uh, that my soul waiteth on the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. And I was talking to Dad about that this morning, and I asked him, why does it say waiteth on them or waiteth on him more than they who watch for the morning? And he gave me an example about like in, uh, like in the army, for example, if there's the men are, they don't know if they're going to get attacked any minute. And they're just really wanting the morning to come so that they can see their enemy advancing towards them. I just thought that was, that kind of stuck out to me. I thought that was neat. What stuck out to me was the part that it says, uh, If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, Lord, who, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. I like that. that God forgives. He, even if we do wrong, there is always forgiveness. Well, it's like, like someone smaller crying out from the depths um, to um, their Savior. And um, it's just like them, like a smaller someone that, that um, isn't as powerful needs help. And, but yeah. I like the part how in the second verse, if it wasn't for the Lord's forgiveness, how would any of us stand? And, um, but there is forgiveness that, we, that he might be feared. I like the part, kind of like what Jaden and Maury talked about, how it says, um, but there is forgiveness with the Lord that he may be feared. And yeah, that's, and how we've all done bad things, so. Um, but he forgives us, and we we all, you know, wouldn't be able to stand because we've done bad things. I thought about, I like the part where uh, it says, "Let Israel hope in the Lord," and uh, He's our only hope. And I like that part. The part where it says, "Out of the depths I have cried unto Thee," reminded me of the. Uh, but the hiding place that the two sisters, Corey and Betsy Ten Boom, were in a concentration camp and they still had faith and the older sister said, Oh, we should tell everyone in the world that no pit is deep is so deep that God's love is <coughs> deeper still. And she said they'd believe them because they were in there. And so she died in the concentration camp and her younger sister Corey tried all her life to keep up to that, telling people about God. When we memorize verses like that, it helps us like understand what they actually mean. I like how in the starting of it, it says how like crying out, and then later it says about waiting for the Lord to come. I like that because at first it's like they're needing help, and then later they're waiting for it. I like when the first part it says, um, Out of the depths I try to the O Lord, hear my voice. And it's just, um, 
a nice verse. Very good. I uh, just might ask, uh, this, it's a psalm that it's, you know, in a day that people blame God for every sad thing that happens, here's, a, here's one of his children defending him the whole way. Uh, and that watch, they that watch for the morning, I've gone through times where I could not sleep, times in my life where there was just no way sleep would come at all. In fact, this was precious in those days. They that watch for the morning. And, and, and uh, when, we're, when we're watching for the morning, one thing we can do is uh, wait on the Lord. When we can't sleep, we can wait on Him. I wait for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. And then the third thing is, like some of you commented, that there's forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. Well, that goes against what some people think of fear of God. But he, he said that the fact that such a great God that gave so much to us and we rebel against Him, the fact that He could forgive, I want to make it fear. I mean, that is awesome. That, that is tremendous. That is, that is something that, that, that God does, that our Creator being that much greater than us, our, 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 we just cannot naturally do that. Um, forgive such a great offense that he did.